All right, so let's get started. Welcome intellectual wanderers and my dear fellow UPSC aspirants. Today we are starting with lecture number 26 and we are starting with one of the most prominent and profound Western philosopher that is Rousseau. But before moving further, I would like to illustrate a story here which will give you an entire summarization of Rousseau's political thought. So let's get started. Once upon a time, there is a there in a small village, there lived two friends named Jean and Jacques. Okay, these were the two friends who lived in a small serene village. Okay, one day they observed their community facing inequalities and disputes over resources. Jean, that is friend A. Okay influenced by Rousseau's okay the Rousseau's this is Rousseau basically Rousseau's idea or the John influenced by Rousseau's political thought believed in the concept of general will John basically believed in the concept of general will okay we will see what the concept of general will is in the course of series and Jack Hughes basically the other friend he majorly emphasized upon the freedom and liberty of individual so their approach was quite different from each other one friend believed in the general will or the general consensus at the same time the other friend believed in the freedom or liberty in the liberty of the individual okay so the jaw the friend a he suggested that the villagers should come together to make decisions that benefit everyone okay on the other hand the jacques was more inclined towards individual freedom and personal interest as tensions rose in the village the two friends engaged in a lively debate Jean argued that prioritizing the general will would lead to a more harmonious and just society on the other hand jacques however insisted on the importance of individual liberties over time the village faced challenges that required cooperation john's approach emphasizing communal decision making gained support as the villagers recognized the benefits of working together on the other hand jack was initially skeptical about the john's idea of general will saw the positive outcome and realized that a balance between individual freedom and collective well-being was essential and this will basically build with the idea behind the rousseau's political thought thought that is how to have a balance between individual liberties and freedom and the general consensus or the idea of collective desires or the general will in the end, the village learned to integrate Rousseau's idea into their governance. What was the Rousseau's idea? The Rousseau's ideas was basically creating a society where the general will and individual liberties coexisted. The story illustrates Rousseau's political thought by exploring the tension between common good and individual freedoms within a community context. Okay, so. Rousseau himself belonging to the school of social contractualist where he will be mainly influenced by the idea of Locke, idea of Plato and etc which we will be seeing in later on. The ideas of both are very contradictory in nature. One believes in the general will or society but Locke somewhere believes in the individual liberties and freedom right and hence here it is a kind of tension between the two ideas right two ideas or the two extremes with this let's get started with our lecture number 26 that is about one of the most profound political philosopher that is john jacques rousseau right and before moving further please make sure to show your love by subscribing to the channel that is upsa geek by nrg and also liking the video okay this is the table of content content for the Rousseau series which will mainly include the introduction that is life and time of Rousseau the second uh, the second course will be his writings his major writing where we will where we will emphasize on his magnum opus that is the social contract the third we will see is the major influence like Locke Plato and etc on Rousseau the fourth concept 
being uh, hailing from the social contractual school he will also give his perspective on human nature then his perspective on state of nature and then ultimately social contract then one of the most profound theory of rousseau is his concept of general will right what is general will general will is basically the concept of collective desires that promote the common good okay collective desires that promote the common good and his entire theory of social contract is a result of a tension between the individual freedom and liberties and the common good or the general will which we will be seeing in his concept of general will then we will see major contradiction as rousseau is also known as one of the most contradictory philosopher his idea about individual and general will always stands in contradiction so we will see what are the major contradictions in the rousseau's idea and finally we will end with the crit criticism and conclusion of rousseau's political thought okay with this let's get started with the introduction of rousseau okay so introduction of rousseau's so i have already recited a story now let's start with rousseau's life sketch or how rousseau's life was okay so rousseau is one of the most controversial political thinker because his ideas contradicted itself okay his ideas of individual and his ideas of general will or the consensus they always stand in a contradiction right here through the picture you can see the several phases of rousseau's right and as we unravel through this course of lecture we will realize the true essence of different personalities of rousseau's how rousseau's explicited his different concept through a different designs and through different articulation okay he was born in 1712 in geneva that is switzerland okay he was born in 1712 in geneva switzerland okay his parents originally they belonged to france and taken shelter in switzerland he lost his mother at the time of birth okay the demise of his mother during the time of his birth will have a lasting impact will have a lasting impact on his personality rousseau's personality we will let us see how rousseau was becoming very vagabond in nature right very much flamboyant in nature where he used where he became a kind of wanderer from place to place his only passions were women right he was lot of he became a womanistic a womanizer okay his only passions were women and writing right these were all the impacts which had due to the loss of his mother during his birth and he was mainly fostered by a single parent that was his father okay he was very much interested in studies okay he was deeply study uh, interested in studies adventure and romance inspired limitless imagination in him his studying such topics was quite uncommon for a boy of his age in those days who could only understand but not realize the complexities of the study that is adventure and romance his father used to read him aloud romance and adventure all through the light this is the this is the education he got rousseau grew into an easy going and irresponsible and passionate man okay what were the consequences of all this happening in his life he became little bit irresponsible irresponsible and passionate passionate man okay he became irresponsible and passionate man okay rousseau okay so rousseau could not reconcile himself to the common truths of europe and left his home at the tender age of 16 to wander like a vagabond okay who are the vagabond vagabonds are the individual who roam who roam from who roam from places to places they do not have a stable home they do not have a stable life right they usually roam uh, from places to places and likewise rousseau also started roaming throughout the europe in his very tender age of just 16 okay unlike hobbes and locke he could not get proper education nor get neither employment nor patronage for a noble noble what noble rulership okay he neither got a employment okay any uh, any any good employment 
nor he got any patronage as in the case of as was the case in Locke right as we, we have seen how he got royal patronage which accrued him an opportunity to experience the realm of political world likewise or unlikewise uh, Rousseau did not get any patronage or royal patronage okay neither he got any employment he had experienced the life of poverty and deprivation he changed his profession many times due to lack of perseverance there came a time when he became completely fr frustrated with his life and himself then came the turning point in his life okay there came a very important turning point in his life which importantly shaped his personality what was that particular point basically the particular point was while on his way to visit detroit okay detroit is place in switzerland okay detroit he came to know about an essay competition okay he came to know about an essay competition to be conducted by a dyson academy right there was an essay competition which was being conducted by the dyson academy on the topic has the revival of the sciences and the arts helped to purify or to corrupt morals right this is also one of the most important work of um, rousseau okay which shaped his personality overnight but he could not adopt himself to the high social environment in which he had been placed right after a sudden highlight of his personality he could not basically adopt to the social environment which he got post fame okay this also provided him an opportunity to come in touch with the intellectuals and publicists of his age in france but being poor he could not win their high esteem and he died in poverty in 1778 okay this was a kind of summary or a kind of story about life and time of rousseau okay so let's see rousseau from the political thought point of view okay how rousseau is important for a for a psir student okay rousseau is known as the father of french revolution okay why he is known as father of french revolution because the slogan of liberty equality and fraternity comes from rousseau okay we will see in the course of lecture how major works of rousseau influenced the the, the citizens in france okay in france it majorly influences because of his criticism of the old monarchical regime right and that is what led to the people of france to revolt against the old regime of monarchy okay that is why he is known as father of political revolution the greatest contribution of rousseau is the theory of general will or popular sovereignty okay as i have already told it is one of the greatest contribution of the rousseau okay because no one else talked in such a greater depth and clarity about the theory of general will in the political philosophy and rousseau is the first who given a greater emphasis upon the theory of general will in the political philosophy that is why he is one of the, the the theory of general will is one of the most important and profound theory by rousseau okay as a thinker rousseau is unique in many contexts he belonged to the time when everyone was praising science rationality modernity rousseau emerged as a critic of modernity right because as he was contemporary to hobbes locke and etc he was also the child of the time of science where everyone was praising the uh, evolution of science technology rationality modernity etc Ro rousseau emerged as one of the major critic of such development of modernity why he became one of the major critic of modernity because rousseau was kind of frustrated okay he was not being able to adopt to the different changes that was happening in the society right and hence he became one of the major critic in critic of modernity okay so the topic of the essay was has the revival of sciences and the arts helped to purify the cons purify or to corrupt the morals okay he was basically given his critic about 
the modernity about the emerging science rationality and etc that is why when everybody was in the sway of modernity everybody was flowing in the direction of modernity rousseau was the first person to take a counter side to take a side which was against the flow right and hence this critic of modernity brought him lot of fame right just because he wrote a critical point of view of modernity in the essay competition this went viral in today's term and he got all the fame which was needed okay for him to come to the limelight right and that is why we are studying rousseau today though rousseau is not part of our syllabus he becomes very sacrosanct and important for us because he belongs to a school of social contractualist right and sometimes a kind of related questions are asked in the exam like hobbes leviathan is rousseau's concept of rousseau's social contract as its head chopped off that we will see in the later course of action or course of lecture okay but this is how important rousseau becomes for us and we should know the concept of general will at least in rousseau's because this will be applicable the concept of general will will be applicable throughout the concept of political science right so this is why rousseau is also known as the thinker of paradoxes why because one side he is advocating the idea of individual freedom and liberties and on the other side he is kind of criticizing science rationality modernity and etc right which are also a progressive progressive thinking a progressive thought right that is why he becomes a thinker of paradoxes okay so not only his language is paradoxical his thoughts also give rise to paradoxical school of thought if he is inspiration for the supporters of democracy okay if he is the inspiration for supporters of democracy why he is this inspiration for supporters of democracy because he will propound the idea of general he will propound the idea of general will or general consensus okay where the will or the consensus of the people or the society will be important at the same time he also provides fodder for totalitarians why why totalitarians because just to ensure the general will of the people he interests set of people with the power okay with the power to ensure general will and that is why it also uh, rousseau also provides fodder for totalitarian don't worry about all the complexities in this concept we will see all this concept in his theory of social contract in much uh, greater clarity okay so just have a idea why he is known as father of paradoxical uh, political thought because in the one hand he supports democracy but on the other hand he also provide fodder for totalitarianism okay and as we know that democracy and totalitarians are the two sides of the extremes right they are contrast they are contrast opposite to each other and that is why he is known as father of paradoxical school of thoughts if he is inspiration for liberals he is also inspiration for socialist right how he is inspiration for liberals because he will propound the idea of freedom and liberties of individuals right freedom and liberties of individuals right that is why it is a inspiration for liberals but also he is inspiration for socialist why he is inspiration for socialist because he will always talk about general will right he will always talk about community right that is why he is also inspiration for socialist and this is where we can see lot of paradoxes this is why, where we can see lot of contradictions in rousseau's idea right we don't know what he wants to portray right but at the end what we will achieve here we will achieve a kind of golden mean right how to have a balance or buddha's madhyam mark to be more precise in indian terms how to have a balance between the two extreme that is liberties and freedom of individuals and also taking into consideration the general will and consensus of the people right so this is the idea behind rousseau's uh, political thought okay so let's see some of the major concern of rousseau okay he represents the psychology
ਨਹੀਂ ਗਿਆ ਵੀ all right now let's see some of the major concern of russo okay what were the major concern why russo was so troubled why russo was stuck in a dilemma okay dilemma between individual liberties and freedom and at the same time the general will okay he represents the psychology of a person who is troubled with the changes happening during his time what were the changes that were happening during his time that was basically modernization industrialization capitalism etc hence he wants to go back to the state of nature right why he was troubled with the changes right if you think critically here in the introduction in the introductory story i have already mentioned that because of his uh, personality because of his pessimistic nature he were he was kind of became a vagabond right he became a pessimistic a pessimist a uh, kind of passionate in nature right he was a passionate in nature though he had lot of political ideas he did not have a resources to fulfill his passionate ideas or desires right he did not possess resources and that is why what was modernization industrialization capitalism was leading to there were few set of industrious or enterprising people who were accumulating lot of wealth right and there was a kind of distortion in the distribution of resources okay what was happening due to modernization industrialization and capitalization Be because of this all the developing or emerging technologies there was a distortion in the distribution of resources right resources which was measuring which was concerning rousseau majorly right and hence he wants to go back to the state of nature where there was where there, there was a equality where there was a equal distribution of resources people need not think about the sustenance of their life right so this is what a major concern of rousseau is and on the basis of his major concern his entire theme will be developed right what is the theme of rousseau's social contract so he propounds the idea that the purpose of life is happiness right so his personality again his personality comes here as we know that his personality was very flamboyant in nature very passionate in nature right a, a hippie kind of lifestyle he was enjoying right so he was very clear that the purpose of life is happiness the source of happiness is individual freedom freedom is doing what one wants to do right and this is what his his thinking was he was very much passionate about only two things first were first was woman he was very much passionate about woman and second thing was the writing right writing or adventure right poetry and etc he was very much passionate about these two things and this this uh, idea shaped his personality as well or his personality shaped his idea so as to say right that he is saying that freedom is doing what one wants to do he is very clear about the purpose in modern times there is no freedom okay it is just an illusion of freedom okay what is modern time here the modern time is basically the time of modernity the time of industrialization the time of capitalism he is saying that there is no freedom in this modern times okay there is no freedom it is just an illusion of freedom okay the purpose of his social contract is how to give freedom or happiness back to man why he why he is saying the idea that the modern time is just a illusion of freedom because on the ones on the one hand there was a prospering society right due to all this modernization tendencies like industrialization capitalism and etc but at the same time there was also a growing inequality in the society right there were also a huge cluster of people who were dwelling themselves into poverty 
right because of the inequal distribution of what resources right that is why rousseau is saying here that no it was just a illusion of freedom it was not freedom because freedom was only for the man who were prospering uh, in their uh, wealth right who were more rich in the society or the higher class of people but the people who were at the same time going into the verge of poverty or they are they are uh, finding themselves in the mire of growing inequality they were kind of being concerned with the notion of freedom right because they were still bonded by a lot of issues like hunger poverty and etc right so this is what rousseau is wanting to say here is that that there is no freedom in the modern times it is just a illusion of freedom because rousseau himself were kind of standing or falling in this part of the society right because majority of his life he was fostered in poverty or deprivation right that is why there was no freedom or liberty for him the purpose of his social contract is how to give freedom or happiness back to man okay social contract is the most famous work of rousseau the opening statement of the book is man is born free but everywhere in chains okay so the most profound statement of rousseau's social contract is that man is born free right when we born everyone born free but everywhere in chains chains of what chains of responsibility okay chains of societal responsibility okay this is what is meant by rousseau's profound statement when he says that man is born free but everywhere in chains right so this was his major concern and on the basis of his major concern he developed his theme of his idea of social contract now let's see his major works right so women woman and writing was his only hobbies as i have already told right he was he was a lot passionate man woman and writing was his only hobbies he was living and leading a flamboyant lifestyle he wrote some famous essay and book some of his famous works are the first the first work of rousseau which brought him into a limelight was his essay on the topic has the progress of science and arts contributed to corrupt or purify the morale okay this particular essay which where rousseau mainly propounded the against idea of progress of science and and arts okay rousseau stood as a critic of modernization in this particular essay right why just articulation of a critical point of view of modernization was was impactful in bringing rousseau into limelight can you guys just give it a thought just you guys can mention your thinking or thought in the comment section i will give it a read okay so the basic idea behind why he he gained a limelight is because when during his time majority of the people they were just flowing in the sway of modernization they were very much influenced by the sway of modernization rousseau was the only individual who was talking against the science or the progress of science right when everyone talking for the progress of science rousseau was the individual who took a stand of a critic of progress of science right that is why his essay on has the progress of science and arts contributed to corrupt or purify the morale brought him into a limelight in europe okay and the second work is the origin of inequality the third one is in the french that is the novella hedois and the fourth and also the one of the most important work is the rousseau's social contract which was published in the year 16 uh, 1762 okay so this were his major writing okay as we have already seen that rousseau is also known as the father of french revolution let's see what was the ideas and influence on the of the rousseau on the french revolution or the citizens of france right what were the major influences or impact of rousseau's ideas on the citizens of france okay his ideas were revolutionary in character right as we have already seen how he was giving more critical standpoint on various topic 
so his ideas were also very revolutionary in character and finally stored the authorities old regime to action okay what what was the old regime it was basically a monarchy a corrupt monarchy in france okay so basically it led to a stirring of old regime to action okay he was a fearless critic of mills deeds of the old regime okay he was a fearless okay or a vociferous critic of misdeeds of old regime what were the misdeeds of old regime it was basically corruption okay it was nepotism which was prevailing in the in the monarchy or the old regime and hence rousseau was a fearless and vociferous uh, critic of misdeeds of old regime rousseau's publication were very popular even in his own lifetime okay his concept of popular sovereignty appealed to masses okay and his concept of popular sovereignty is also his concept of general will okay where he will talk about the will of the popular or the people okay so his concept of popular sovereignty appeals to the masses of france it found a solution for the irrational and despotic rule of france okay solution what was the solution basically the general will or the popular sovereignty where the people of the france will be sovereign than the despotic rule or the monarchy of france this is kind of solution in the concept of rousseau okay thus he became one of the popular influence for the french revolution this was one of the contribution of rousseau in the french revolution okay now let's see major influence okay who were the political philosophers or political masters who shaped the political thought of rousseau okay so the first and foremost is plato okay he borrowed two basic ideas from plato okay what are the two basic ideas which rousseau borrowed from plato the first was political subjection what is political subjection the idea of political subjection is that despite the situation in the state every citizen should be subjected to a political authority or a state okay or a political authority this is a definition of political subjection despite a prevailing situation in the state every citizen should be subjected to the political authority or a sovereign state why because if it is not then citizens will bound to be governed by their natural instinct which can lead them lead, lead them to a state of nature okay what will be the state of nature again it will differ from thinker to thinker but basically it will be a chaotic situation because everyone will have their own set of laws everyone will have their own set of execution and adjudication which can lead to lot of confusion and hence the first influence on rousseau is idea of political subjection by plato it is only a secondary matter if the state maintains law and order or not okay so here the maintenance of law and order becomes secondary the first and primary objective of plato is to is political subjection okay is essentially ethical for plato political subjection of citizens is essentially ethical what is the second influence by the plato he also believed that community itself is the chief moralizing chief uh, uh, or the chief moralizing agency okay why community itself is a chief moralizing agency just because of social desirability okay social desirability the concept of social desirability what is the concept of social uh, desirability when the individual is in the society he ought to act in a just or civil manner okay this is the concept of social desirability okay and that is why plato also believed that community itself is the chief moralizing agency and therefore represents the highest moral order and values right right as we know that plato was a a what a kind of what can you guys think yes right he was a communism intensive philosopher who will give more importance to the idea of community right for him state is individual writ large right for him society is prior 
than the individual right this is why he gives more priority to community and considers community to be a chief moralizing agency what is the second now let's see who was the second influence okay here the second influence and one of the most influential individual is Locke on Rousseau okay Locke is one of the most profound all right so let's see the second influence okay so here Locke is one of the most profound influence on Rousseau Locke is one of the most important influence on Rousseau let's see how Locke influenced Rousseau Locke's idea of concept of natural right his idea of state of nature his idea of ultimate sovereignty of community theory of consent of the people had a lasting influence on Rousseau right so how Locke had very optimistic or good perspective of human nature. The similar perspective of Rousseau will also be influenced by Locke. Even Rousseau will have a same idea about what human nature, about state of nature, that human are basically good civilized or, uh, or good civilized and they are able to rule themselves right and accordingly he will formulate his idea of general will what is his idea of general will it is basically popular sovereignty why from where this idea of popular sovereignty is derived basically it is derived from the Locke's idea that peoples are able to rule themselves right and hence Rousseau's idea of general will is also based on the Locke's idea of social contract right or Locke's idea of on human nature and also the state of nature right so Locke is one of the most influential personality in the life of Rousseau Rousseau is profoundly influenced by such ideas of Locke okay such ideas of Locke and starts where Locke starts but ends by reaching a very different conclusion right so here what does this mean here Rousseau like Locke also starts with very positive notion about the human nature the state of nature social contract general will and etc but at the end how Locke was very much consistent about his theory right Rousseau kind of differed from his perspective which he taken from Locke and at the end he kind of propound the idea of totalitarianism right just to ensure the freedom and liberty of individual he will end up establishing a totalitarian design that's why he is differing from the Locke when it comes to conclusion part of Rousseau's philosophy is devoted to attempt at solving certain problems which had been left as a question by Locke right so there are certain set of questions like 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 which was which we have already seen in the previous lecture uh, just to inform you all if you guys haven't watched the Locke series I would <coughs> mention a link, a link in the description box and also there will be a recommendation in the end of this lecture go and have a watch of the previous lecture series because if you haven't then it will not help you uh, sustain the conceptual understanding in the later course of lecture okay so please go and watch that so questions or major concern of Locke like the social contract which was signed by the by the forefathers will that also be religiously followed by the future generation that was one of the major concern of Locke right so this is why here the Rousseau will attempt to deal with that particular question that it should always uh, it should always be based on the general will which is always a evolutionary in nature and as a general will will change the social contract will also change right so Locke Rousseau's philosophy is also a kind of attempt at solving certain problems which had been left as an open question by lock right and the, let's see what was the third influence okay third influence which was very personal in nature was his own personal life and what his own personal life and experience okay this is how it shaped his political thought right what was his own personal life or how was his personal life he was unstable dejected and frustrated person he was living at a time it was being increasingly felt that political equality without economic equality was meaningless as I have already told during the time of modernization or industrial revolution there was growing economic inequality okay growing economic inequality but at the same time 
the political thinkers like Hobbes, Locke and etc. they were propounding, strongly propounding the idea of political equality. But Rousseau was very much dejected, frustrated because political equality without economic inequality or without economic equality was meaningless. Okay, because with economic equality there comes freedom right if people are bound by poverty and etc hunger and etc how they will live more free life because they will always be subjected to all the societal evils like poverty hunger their stand of standard of living will be very poor right and since Rousseau also belongs to this particular section of society he considers political economic without economic equality was meaningless and that is why he was unstable dejected or frustrated by all the modernization that was happening during his time like industrial revolution right and capitalism and etc right so he therefore could not remain influenced by this communistic tendencies of him his time right so people like uh, plato's and uh, his ideas about communism were greatly prevailing in the in the in the countries like switzerland right where the communistic tendencies were prevailing but he could not sustain with the idea of communism because of his his personal frustration with the growing economic inequality right if i am not sure about my one square meal of the day how will i be able to advocate the idea of community how will i be able to advocate the idea of what society right so this was one of one of the major concern of rousseau if i am not sure about my next uh, next meal of the day how will i be advocating the idea of society or community right that's why he was frustrated dejected and unstable right which will shape his his personality right that is why he is also being concerned about the individual liberty and freedom right this is why a major this is why a major tension is evolving between the his concept of individual freedom liberty and his concept of general will right why he is talking about individual freedom and liberty just because of growing economic inequality right which is one of the major source of what individual lack of freedom or liberty right without an economic equality without an economy independence or autonomy one will not be able to fully satiate his economic or individual freedom and liberty right so these were the three influence which were major influence on Rousseau's political thought with this we almost came to today's uh, today's end of the lecture and you guys can check your progress progress by answering this particular question that Rousseau's general will is Hobbes Leviathan with its head chopped off i think you guys will be able to attempt this particular question uh, by attending the next lecture okay uh, which will be uploaded very soon but try answering this question take a note down and try answering this particular question in by attending the next lecture and try sending your answer uh, at this mail handle i will for sure evaluate it and also come back with a valuable feedback also ensure to show your love by subscribing to the channel that is upsc gig by nrg and uh, thank you so much remember the motto statement of upsc gig by nrg that is as you strive so you thrive aap jitni mehnat karenge utni phal milegi with this let's bind up for today see you tomorrow thank you